Right? No. So Jackie, of course, you're both musicians and you play together and separately as well. And But you've been a duo now for years, so I, I can't wait to see what this kind of competition is going to be. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. so when we come back, we're going to open up the basket. Stay tuned to Scoff Off. I don't have a whole lot of confidence in my cooking skills, but I ain't going down without a fight. I'm not very good at multitasking, so <laughs> it's not a good idea to talk to me while I'm cooking. Welcome back to Scarf Up. Okay, guys, before you open the basket, I gotta go over the rules. There's mm -hmm. 30 points in total, 10 points for taste, 10 points for presentation, and 10 points for the use of your basket ingredients. So you have to use some of everything in the basket. And if you wanna enhance the basket, you can use everything, anything behind you here in the pantry or the fridge, mm -hmm. all right? So you can expand your horizons a little bit if you want. Pots and pans are over here, and everything you need to cook is in front of you. So let's open the basket. Okay, this is the time. This is the time. <laughs> All Ooh, right. Cheers. Okay, take it out. We got asparagus. We've got a mm -hmm. strawberry jam, goat cheese. Never use goat cheese. And some chicken thighs. Do I see goat cheese in mine? That's goat cheese. Right yeah. there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, gather your thoughts together. Mm -hmm. It's time to scoff up. So I was uh, thinking about how I love Piatto pizza and the caramelized onions and goat cheese. And, and I was thinking, I can put chicken on there. Chicken with caramelized onions and strawberry jam, that'd be deadly. All right, I'll take that out of your way. You just take your basket over out of the way, there you go. Are we going? All right, so you've ever, ever eaten goat cheese before? Yes, yes my yes, gosh. good. I love goat cheese. Dies for it. Such a savory little cheese. So what's your first thoughts, Jackie? Uh, I'm gonna cook the chicken <laughs> <laughs> in olive oil, and I'm gonna use some uh, some garlic, probably, and some onions. Um, the only time I've ever had goat cheese actually is on pizza. Yeah, and you know it goes well with uh, those ingredients that I give you. Yeah, um, they do match each other. Uh, and what about you, Carla? What are you gonna? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm just gonna. She don't want to say. She wants her to copy. And, uh, oh yeah, she's right. I oh can yeah. tell she's staying even close to the chest over there. She's like, I don't want to tell her. What I don't really doing. know what it's called. It's not really called anything. I'm just gonna make like a. But I like how you both snapped off the ends of the asparagus. Yeah, that yeah. is the bitter part. Certainly, I would keep that then to, to kind of cook off and make some soup with uh, at another point. But yeah, it's, it is bitter. So you're keeping the best part of the asparagus there for sure. Are we allowed to use like? Um something that is pizza kind of oriented yeah you mean like a flatbread yeah yeah oh yeah you use whatever's over there help yourself um so so as i said earlier you're both uh, uh musicians singers songwriters performers uh fantastic ones at that um and you're both award winners uh with music nl and that's really exciting so uh carla tell me about your uh, the awards that you won Oh, uh, music and now this God it feels like a lifetime ago. Now it actually is. Um, I've won the country album, female artist, female artist. Yeah, yeah. I think that was it. These are big ones, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And then the, then the band uh, used to be in a band called The Secrets. Yeah. And we won a country album as well. Right. And uh, and you've also been nominated for ECMAs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so you've had a, a, a great solo career. When did you start? When did I start? When I was three? <laughs> when I was three. You've always um, wanted to sing, I know. You, I've been at this for years, yeah. yeah. But like when I, uh, when I came out of uh, my college days in Stephenville, I guess, uh, around 2000, I moved to town. Jackie, you'd know. I ran into you downtown, latched on, never let go since. <laughs> That's the story you tell us, anyway. It was 2002. So what were you studying in Steamville? Music industry and performance. Okay, so you always yeah. knew you were destined for, for being an artist. Oh, yes, an artist. absolutely, yep, yep. And so you came to town and you, and, you, and you met up with Jackie? Yes, and I kind of latched what, on were to you her. At a bar? Were you playing or were you just She down? was playing downtown. She was doing right. a Sunday night gig, like a 7 to 10 uh, gig downtown on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started playing with her down for that. And... Uh, then I just kind of went through the motions of, you know, doing, I did start doing my own thing eventually. I did a lot of coming and going. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I, I had a lot of going away parties for Carolyn. Oh, yes. is that right? Yeah. yeah. Where I, you going I, I like, I like the cake. <laughs> he likes cake. <laughs> yeah. I saw a post on online the other day. Uh, how many places, one of those little things, you know, you fill out how many places have you lived. 
and I listed them all out and there's 21 different addresses that I've had. So I've gotten around, but yeah, like life is an adventure. So I've, I've, uh, I've moved around a lot. Uh, I just cake, kept, you know, just spread my wings. I went to Halifax for a while right. and, and um, did we some theater work. We were looking for opportunity, right? Yeah, and I, you know, sure. did some theater work in different places. And you turn on your burner, didn't it? Yeah, so I just, you know, made my way around, uh, around the country, basically, just doing some different stuff. Have you ever been to Nashville? Yes. Yeah, yeah a few times. Right. Yeah, I was right. just talking, talking about that with someone just in, actually, at the mall. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, fantastic. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. Nashville is uh, is a dream. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. She's rolling the asparagus with oh, chicken yeah. and goat cheese. Yeah. So I've seen her wrap asparagus uh, in prosciutto before, and so I'm like, here we go. She's definitely got this in the bag. But I'm like, no, sir. I ain't going down with this. You know, if it ever works, never work. If the music scene doesn't work out for you, which I know it is, uh, you could always be a chef. <laughs> I love, I would love to be a chef. I mean, I'd have to be a lot more. I'd learn the, you know, the ins and outs of why things well, you're are. you're creative, and I think that's yeah. the thing too, because, yeah. uh, you know, most successful chefs are creative, right? I mean, I, I could deal. If I had to choose uh, something to do outside of music, yeah, well, I guess chef could be, it could be something that, I, that I'd choose, yeah. Like in the shed, cooking in the shed, because I die for shed, so, you know, cook. I cooked uh, fish stew in the shed the other day. Yeah. yeah. And Jackie, I, I understand that you lived with a very successful chef at one point. I'm very messy. Yeah, we were we were roommates, myself and Todd Perrin. Did you learn, learn any tricks? Pretty. No, I didn't actually. Uh, but the big joke was that my delicacy was like white cheddar mac and cheese. <laughs> that was the big joke. Did you make it from scratch? And or I you really bought a packet of. Oh, I bought it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I really realized how useless I was at cooking when Todd came along. <laughs> but he was amazing. You can't have every skill in the world, son. You're very talented and, and also, uh, you know, um, award-winning. And, and like your your song, um, Fiery Hockey Blood, has been really, I mean, it's set a record now for number one in the top for country. Tell me, tell me. Uh, the East Coast Top 30. Right. The CIEO East Coast Top 30 out of, uh, out of Halifax, mm -hmm. which was awesome. Right, that's really cool, and it's a beautiful song. Thank you. And you're joined with uh, Chris Andrews and lots of celebrities in your video, too. I know, the video was really fun making, and I was so grateful to have everybody. I mean, to have Bob Cole and Ryan Klo and Chris Andrews, Roger Monder produced it. Um, you know, it was just, uh, it was really cool. All really super talented people, right? Roger yeah. does such great work. And of course, Chris is so, you know, you know Chris's voice as soon as you hear it, right? Oh, yeah. no, He's so iconic. As soon as I wrote it, I always envisioned his his voice on it. So mm -hmm. he was really kind to me, I must say. Really kind. Right. And you've been on a, of course, you've got a few albums out. And you've been on a few collaboration albums as well. Yes. Yeah, so how does all that work come about? Like, you know, because, I mean, you want to get heard. Being an artist is about being heard, right? Yeah. Um, well, I have my two, my two solo albums and um, then I did some collaborations with um, Homebrew and a gospel album actually um, so yeah a bunch of different stuff so I've been very fortunate that way um, really lucky and it's nice to be able to do something different right 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 and, and of course uh, you're also a um, music and male female artist of the year in your in your uh over your life, you've won that as well, which is really exciting. You know, I don't know if you realize, like that is a big thing to, to win an award in your industry is, is a big deal. There's a lot of musicians around. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it, it Not was- Not a lot of, you know, there is a lot. 2002, so I'm really excited about that. And, uh, you know, um, really grateful and blessed and I just really honored missed. for all of it. So, um, yeah, it, it, and this year I was nominated for, um, the Folk Roots Artist of the Year for Music and so that was really cool. Yeah, that's really as cool. As well. Of course, COVID really put a little cramp on uh, music this year for live performance, hey? And everybody's yeah. had to do, like, you know, z uh, you know, virtual things on Facebook and Instagram and I know. whatever, and it's not the same, is it? No, and, and we're kind of getting back to some normalcy. Uh, like, Carla and I did a show last week in Norris Point, which was really cool. Right. Really cool. Um, and so you said North Point. Now, Carly, you're from Rollington, right? I am, yeah. Yeah, and on um, the Great Northern South, Pistol, of course. And, yeah, so uh, you're getting up there when you're... <laughs> you're not much further up than you... 
Oh, what, you know, St. Anthony's further, right? This That's is all. Well, yeah, it's, it's on the other side. I'm on the other, so not other side of the peninsula. So you come up right. and you go across and come down. So I'm on like, the east side. Roddickton is on the east side of the peninsula. So. so are you from a family of musicians? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And um, so where, where did you pick up the, uh, so who, who, in, who in your family plays? Mom and Dad. Yeah? Oh. Yeah. Dad played a little bit of guitar. He wasn't, you know, Dad, he kind of you know, learned himself what to do himself. He wasn't like, you know, very, he didn't know names of chords and stuff like that. He just played for himself. Mm -hmm. But uh, mom was like fantastic piano player. Like, right. Oh my God. She was, mom was unreal. Yeah. I always mention when I'm talking about how my, my start began was in singing in church and playing in church. So mom was a pianist and dad was a choir leader. And so they had, they played very active roles in, in church growing up. And, uh, and that's where my, you know, my training ground basically was, was in, uh, in church and a scattered lines club. The first time I, I met you was at an open mic at O'Reilly's. Okay. And I remember going back, I'm sitting, sitting in the back of the room going, wow. <laughs> Who is this girl? <laughs> like then you give me goosebumps to hear your voice. It's a beautiful voice. You're, Thank you. you really have a beautiful voice. And, Do and you know, sorry, I mean, that's you. okay. <laughs> Do you know that when I first moved to town and lived downtown, I didn't have a job. Right. And I used to, that's how I survived, was playing the open mic nights at O'Reilly's because you, you used to won. win a $50 <laughs> gift card. I yes. probably told you this before. <laughs> But you, so you win a $50 gift card, and I mean, most people, that's their night out drinking. Right. But for me, you used to have this poverty arse on the go. Right. Where it was like cheap wings and, and, and uh, chips. That's right. So I used to, every night of the week, that's how I would eat. I'd come down, and I'd use the $50 gift certificate to keep me going throughout the week. Right. Right? And, I, right. and somehow, I won, like, a lot. You like, and I was permitted that I somehow to win. Well, we're just like the best person to win every week, so yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, whoever that may be, and it was you a lot, I know it was. Yeah. And, and Jackie, of course, certainly we know each other for a long time. Yes. Yeah, yes. and um, you know, and a part of our, our, our children's open mic. Yes, um, right. Right? I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you hosted that for us yeah. for a while, and uh, that was super. I mean, that was really mentoring oh, was, yeah. young artists, and there were so many talent. Mm. Wasn't there so much talent? Well, Alan Ricketts was right. there. Oh, my God. We Alan, right? oh, and you know who else? Aaron Collis. Was he? He used to come into it, too. Yeah. Wow, I'm really committed. dating myself now. Right. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> anyway, we've got 10 minutes left. I was going to say, boss, 20 minutes not very long. <laughs> I'm no. the messiest, slowest cook No, you're doing well. You're, you're both... Uh, both doing very well there, but yeah, we got ten minutes left. And anyway, you're both moms, and 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 Jackie, you've got two children, uh, okay. Jack and Grace. Yep. And, and Carolyn, you're a fairly new mom, right? Yes. So, are your children into music? Do they play? Are they? I think that Elliot has got something going on. Definitely. Yeah. Right. He's uh, and he from very early, he had definitely had. You can tell that he's got something going on. Right. Yeah. And he loves it. He just. And he loves when you play. He loves it, yes. Yeah. We go into music stores and he'll like, I'll pick up a guitar and I look and he's like sat down in, in, on the floor waiting for me to play. Right. Yeah, it's really cute. That's nice. And what about yeah. you, Jackie? Um, Grace is in voice lessons. Yeah. And um, my little boy is not really interested. He's more sport, sports, dirt bikes, uh, quads, skidoo, and that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Little, typical little boy, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, so tell me about some of your albums that you have, and, and are you working on something new? And I know, uh, uh, Carly, you've got, so you were in The Secrets, yeah. which is fantastic, band, and you got a new band started, yes. Ladylike, Lady right? Yes, Ladylike, yeah. yeah. We got a new single coming on Thursday, on the 18th, and uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna... So gonna, who's in that band with you? Myself and Tyra Lynn, Tyra yeah. Lynn Eddy, and Carol Bestvater, fiddle player. Wow. So we're really, awesome. really excited yeah. to have her with us. Awesome. She's awesome. Oh yeah, she's wicked. Yeah, and Jackie, have you played any bands? I know you and Carla plays a duo with like for like almost twenty years now. You've been playing together as, as uh, you know, a duo. Yeah. Uh, no, I just I play solo and I play with Carla. And oftentimes we have done like an all if we're doing a big show, then we'll do an all female band. Right. Which is super cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, no, it's uh, and sometimes it's hard to balance it all, right? So it's you know. So you got, what do you got in your chicken there? You got onions, what else did you add in there? I have onions and I have ginger and, and you got garlic. Jam in there, right? I don't have the jam in there oh, yet. Oh no, no, okay, I saw the no. jam open, I didn't okay. I just need to turn on the oven. And no, the oven behind you is on. on. Okay, perfect, perfect. Both use the same oven. 
And, and can you get your chicken in the oven, right, Carla? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm supposed to get it high enough. I'm going to crank and, it up a and bit. And you'll use your jam and just remind you of your all your ingredients. The jam, yep. <laughs> Jam. This is going to be interesting. This you can put the jam here and put that onion jam. You could have used the strawberry I know. Jam. My mother asked if actually anybody had to eat it. Oh, well, so yeah. she had huge faith in me. You know what you can do? You can bring home a doggy bag to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> she will not eat this. <laughs> she you will say, not eat mom, this. I actually did this. I actually got it all done. So you guys, of course, um, you know, yeah, you've been playing at Arati's uh, over the years. And, and uh, hopefully we'll... Uh, We'll uh, start to see you back on stage again, Jackie, because well, Carl has been uh, been doing some uh, Friday evenings, and you're going to join her occasionally, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah, it's really I am. Um, we started this Women of the Rock thing a little while ago at O'Reilly's, and of course, you two came down and, and participated in one of them, yep. and it's been going really, really well. And I first time I saw you guys together in years, and I thought, where have I been living? <laughs> How am I missing out on these women? Yeah, no, that's a really great idea, actually. It's so nice to see the women um, performing and doing, you know, having their own night. It's awesome. You know, really we are, awesome. I say this all the time because I'm not a musician. I adore music. I tried my damnedest to be a musician. I took piano lessons and voice lessons and all that kind of stuff, but realized, hey, I wasn't going to be that good at it, so I had to just understand I, I love music from a different perspective. <laughs> No, I know, but it's so, you're, you're so lucky to have that, and, and I mean, there's so many amazing artists down there. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to the summer and just getting out playing live again. Right. Nice. And do you guys have an album? Because if you don't have an album together, you need to do that. You know what? Well, we so, have a single on your album. Yeah, right? and, and when we performed in Norris Point uh, last weekend, somebody yeah. actually said that to us. They're like, you guys should do... An album or record a song, absolutely, right? You know, and absolutely. Uh, we've never we've never done that. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot about the asparagus. So when you're on the road, yeah, but you, you, you got it in the water, do you? Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. Uh, when you're on the road, um, like <laughs> traveling and stuff, you must eat out a lot. Actually, this past weekend we didn't do with Carla. No, I'm i I like to take food, and like. When we go, when I go on the road with the girls, we've always we go into like units where you can, you can go to the grocery store and pick up food. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're going to be there for any length of time. Right. Yeah. Now, last it can get expensive on the road, right? Yes. You have to eat yeah, out every definitely. Meal. You got five minutes yeah. left. If you got to eat out every meal, that can add up after a while, right? Yeah. But tell me, so if you could collaborate with anybody outside of Jackie now and your bandmates yeah. in the world, who would you collaborate with? You love country music, right? Yes, uh, Vince Gill. Vince Gill? Wow. That's My dream is to be his backup singer. Oh, is that right? Yeah, like that's, that'd be it for me. Absolutely. Uh, Vince Gill, yes, Vince Gill is the dream for me. I've been, I've like, I've seen him a couple times now. I went to Nashville a few years ago and he was playing with his band, Time Jumpers, down at 20 bucks, go in, he plays every Monday night down there. It's deadly. That's fantastic. Yeah. And for me, it will be Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Oh well, yeah. There you go. You see, you're both leaning now. You, I know, Carla, that you both do traditionally. We do all kinds of genres of music. There's no doubt. You consider yourself a folk artist, yeah, right? Yeah. A musician. And and you, you would be considered one of those too. But you lean towards country, oh. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's, here. there's no way. I mean, I can't really get around doing anything else. So would you move to Nashville? Oh. In a heartbeat. Yeah. If Nashville was in Canada. If Nashville was in Canada. I'd be gone. Yeah. Well, what about Alberta? Is that not a, a well, you know, country? Well, I suppose, it, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a similar thing. You want to get thing. any oven now if you're going to get a cook. I know. I got to put it in Because it's like less than five minutes left. <laughs> Carla, Ooh, look at that. I can smell it and see yeah. it cooking. Yeah. Um, She's doing good. She's yeah. cooked that before. Just yeah. So I, I, do you think? I, oh, I mean, yes. I mean, so I've seen it before. I, I do a similar dish, but we don't use chicken. We no, I use, use prosciutto. Yes, and I just realized I didn't have to use the chicken on that. Mm -hmm. I could have went into. You could have used prosciutto, but yes. that's all right. You're doing, you're doing well. And yeah, that's absolutely. actually something I may steal, depending on how it tastes. Yeah. <laughs> something I may steal for later. Yeah. So is there a broil option here? Uh, well, well, I'm going to... Why don't, you turn, why don't you just turn the thingy up a bit, but you don't want to burn her food. No, I know. I don't want to burn. Oh, maybe I would, should burn her food. Yeah, it burn it. Like, it looks like it's burning. Come on, mother, burn the food. Here, why don't you switch it over, put yours on top, and put hers down low. Right? Just, just switch them around. <laughs> I don't know what I got done here. I got a combination of things happening. Jacket. Or put them side by side. I'm still fit that way, but yeah. And uh, 
So uh, what's uh, what's what's next for your career, Jackie? Like you're going to. Um, you got this uh, song. You continue. How many songs have you written in your life? Oh my gosh, not many. <laughs> no, not I did. True. I did. Uh, well, I did two albums worth. So, uh, and I have lots of others that are in bits and pieces. And um, you know, and, and but I need to kind of be by myself to write. So, getting away as a mother is like sometimes it's hard to get to the bathroom. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, we're hoping to do some shows this summer, and um, we're hoping down the road to do, or sometime soon, to do a live release for Fiery Hockey Blood, because that right. never happened okay, um, because of COVID. So we're hoping to do that and uh, you know, see what else comes. Sometimes when you've been at something, like the past fall and the winter has been really busy. So, Two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> look at that, boss. Look, yeah. I'm so impressed. I'm starving. <laughs> 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 We're just waiting for Jackie to come out of the oven now. Yeah. <laughs> and Carol is still cooking Look. away over there. Oh, it, yeah. It's like, I'm going to be like your mother now. Leave the door closed or it won't cook. I know. <laughs> yes, but you can't be so turn the light on. <laughs> like, we, so you pressed. poke and you'll be kick, checking the cake all the time. And Mom would say, it's not going to cook oh, I that know, way, I right? know. <laughs> you like, Mine's finished, whatever it wants so to be or not. <laughs> so you guys say, you know, you say you're, you're, you're uh, competitive and you want to win. But you're not really, like, you know... Kind of sabotage Carol or nothing? No, we're not no. catty about it. No, we're not. It's no, not, not at all. <laughs> one not minute at left. All. As so, I, we have to have another plate in one minute? You have to have it ready for me to, to, to taste in one and minute. And you're actually going to try this? I am actually going to try it. <laughs> I know, again. I'm like, I have my hands so, like, so up all this. Carol, I'm so impressed. And, uh, what's, in your, what's in your rice and your... Um, I think there's curry in there. Is what's curry in your chicken? Thing next no, mate. You can put jam over curry and all. No, but is there curry in your chicken? <laughs> no. Oh, no. That's pesto. Sweet and spicy goes well. I know. <laughs> anyway, let's go with, uh, with yeah. What should we call this? Uh, what are you going to call Conjure. It? My nickname when I lived, when I first moved to town, was the Queen of Conjure. Queen of Conjure. Yeah. Yeah. So back in the poverty's arse days, wasn't much in the cupboards. So you know you get you, you conjure up whatever you can whatever you can scrounge up in your cupboard. You conjure up anything so I'd eat. Right. I'm anyway, so impressed. So good luck. Good luck. God bless. You conjure up something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just it's artichoke pesto chicken with mushrooms and a bit of uh, rice with the goat cheese and chicken asparagus. My goat right. cheese. And, and, and Jackie, you got to get that on the plate now in 10 seconds. I know. I'm coming. <laughs> Watch your coming. hands now. I'm coming. You see, uh, do, we have, do we have do the dishes? <laughs> well, the loser. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm just, <laughs> yes. no, I'm just joking. Uh, you got to here. It yeah, it does look really good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, my God. We got okay, marshmallows well, Jackie's got to plate that's that not, It's just the cheese. It's I can't good. believe you got marshmallows on your pizza. <laughs> marshmallow? I didn't have marshmallow on my pizza. No. It looked like marshmallow, but it was a marshmallow. I don't Do you want some help? Here. No, I'm good. I'm good. Got it? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Look, okay, Todd Perrin should be impressed with me. Like, <laughs> Todd Perrin, you can get a job at Mallard now, Nick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. We come back, we're going to see who wins. Stay tuned to Scoff Off. Welcome back to Scoff Off. Now, guys, I'm going to try the dishes and see who wins. So, Carol, I'm going to start with yours. Mm -hmm. So, you used all the ingredients. So you clearly used the chicken, a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. And um, the goat cheese. Yes, in goat here. cheese is in the, yep. Okay, yep, and the jam, I can see the jam, and I can mm -hmm. see the asparagus. Yep. So what's in your rice? Is that just, it's just, just, just yeah, a bit of, just, okay. And, and what do you have in this uh, mixture? Uh, that's just a uh, sauteed um, mushrooms and pesto, um, artichoke pesto. I'm not gonna go right for this one, because you got uh, all the ingredients and in And it's chicken. Yeah. All your ingredients is in like this one bowl. Yes, it is, yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I See, I'm not, I don't like things to go to waste, which is why I ended up having to cook it all. <laughs> It is. If I could have dumped the whole, whole pack, that was everything. A whole pack of goat cheese and something. Uh, yeah. It's the hardest part. Yeah. Don't talk after you eat. <laughs> yeah. I didn't put any spices or anything on any of that. Just, no, I didn't put any any spices at all. <laughs> yeah. I went. For, I was looking for uh, uh, garlic. Uh, Jackie. But I didn't want to use garlic powder. Oh, Jackie, I gotta tell you, garlic powder is the way to go every time. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. Cooking shows. A lot of times it comes down I to do. the seasoning. Yes. I do. Yeah. 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 I know. Mm -hmm. So yours, just I, I can see, see the asparagus. You've got a piece of chicken in there. I can see the goat cheese. Yeah. And you got onion, onions, and almonds, and asparagus, and goat cheese. What are and jam? What are thing did you use? Caramelized onions. Right. And oh, uh, I would be wicked on that a bit. <laughs> yeah. Butter. 
My peanut butter, butter and jam pizza. No peanut way. butter and jam pizza. That was all. Yeah. They're very good. PB and J pizza. That's a thing in it. They're both pretty good. Are they really? You're gonna try it in a minute anyway. Anyway, they're both very good. Thank you both so much for being oh. on the show. Thanks for having us. Hey, listen, when you get a chance to get out and see these ladies, you have to. Carl Brookham, Jackie Sullivan, thank you. Today's winner is Jackie Sullivan. <gasps> That's it for this episode. Oh, I'm to go home. We'll see you soon. It's obvious these two ladies are great friends, but the so-called underdog took the win with taste. <clears throat> Congrat <coughs> congratulations on your win. Thank you. With your flatbread pizza. <laughs> Look, me always twitching and everything. See that? I was pretty impressed. With yourself? With the pizza? With yourself. With the pizza. See? I'll tell you. <laughs> She'll be gloating now to the end of her days. Well, see, Anyways. I, I was the underdog. I really was. Oh, yeah? What were you under? I was just not as good at cooking as you are. No? Okay. You know yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, are we going to do this audition for the new drummer or what? I think she's pretty good. Is she? I know. I think yeah. she's pretty good. I'm so, impressed, yeah. actually. The kick drum is like... I think she got future. She'd be good to take on the road yeah. for many reasons. Yes. Go ahead, number one. Well, she can cook. She knows lots of people. But then again, we got you now. <laughs> can cook. I mean, like for, flatbread for life. Every any time we go anywhere now, that's it. I'm just buying flatbread and you can just take care of it. But she would get us lots of gigs too. Yes, yeah. Apparently she's with like I know. tourism. And, yeah. Tourism, hospitality, and there all you that go. stuff. So she's, you know. Yeah. Are you gonna log her drums? <laughs> program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Who are you? My grandfather was a Ghostbuster. This thing is real? <laughs> what did we let out? <laughs> I think we opened the gates of hell. <laughs> hey, bud. <laughs> How are you doing? It's your boy DC, Thursday night host of Rogers Out of the Fog. Right, you kind of got to make your own fun. Yeah. Which was a transition for me right. going into the morning show There's here. Crowd, keep doing the amazing work, will you? Um, they're learning about how to hire people. 20 years of local matter, so join me every Thursday night and see what's going on in the fog. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. I finally realized I needed help. The people at Jane's and Knows really, really took care of me. And I'm glad I chose a local solution. I felt like they understood me better. Getting help with my debt has given me the energy, the headspace, and the time to make my dreams come true. A chance to start again with knowledge, support, and people in your corner. Are you looking for that kind of help? It's okay. 
Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosothy.ca. Nicole Martin, the proud ambassador for the Comfort Bear program. Comfort Bears provide these cuddly bears to local children who are terminally ill, facing trauma, or battling a serious illness. Every $20 donation will place a Comfort Bear into the loving arms of a child involved in our program. It is our hope to distribute 1,000 bears in 2022. Please join us and provide comfort to kids in their time of need. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of Out of the Fog. As you know, Rogers is all about community, giving back in so many ways, and so is Jason Piercy. Jason has been a host of Out of the Fog for several seasons, and he has done so much in and outside of the show to show his commitment to the people and the place where we live. Early this fall, Jason was in a very serious accident, and now Joe Dominix, his lifelong best friend and friend of Rogers TV, sits down for a special interview to let us know the question that everyone has been asking, how is Jason? Stay tuned. Watching Rogers TV St. John's. I've had dreams that weren't just dreams. Am I crazy? If you want the truth, Nia, yeah. you're going to have to fool on me. I'm making this film because I saw myself in your story. I could seriously be on the verge of having a mental breakdown, but as long as I'm able to go skate, I'm completely fine. Welcome back everybody for a special edition of Out of the Fog, a sit down interview with Joe Dominic's best friend of Jason Piercy. Let's go back. So Jason, thanks for sitting down and taking the time to talk to us. Uh, people are real curious about how you're doing these days. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I've been sort of to myself and pretty um, unavailable on social media, which is a stark adjustment <laughs> to the rest of my existence prior to the afternoon or evening of September the 29th, um, you know, which is the date of what will be from now until forever referred to as the incident. Uh, but it's, it's good and fun, and I'm glad that I get the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation. Um, because it's, it's good for my head too. Like doing stuff like this is always such a big part of life for me. And it's um, much like all of the other muscles in my body, it's not been exercised very much for a really long time. So uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be able to do this. So for anybody who doesn't know what happened, just bring us back to a few months ago when this all went down and just, just tell us, uh, well, what you remember, I guess, of it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember the actual accident itself. I know I had been down in Portugal Cove with a, a client and riding my motorcycle. It was one of the last nice days of the year as it turned out. So I was I was coming up out of Portugal Cove and coming down into St. John's. I was gonna go get a bite to eat. It was shortly after four o'clock. I was stopped at the lights on uh, Major's Path and I was headed down into St. John's and I remember the light turning green and I remember starting to move forward um, and the next thing that I have as a memory is some combination of reality and, and hallucination actually, and maybe thoughts that I had while I was in, uh, cause I was, I was in a coma for a while an induced coma for eight or 10 days or something. So I don't know whether or not my first memories are real memories mm. or if they're like half dream, half hallucination. Cause I was on a lot of uh, opioids for painkillers. Right. Proud to say that this was not my fault. <laughs> Mom, I rode my bike safely and it, 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 I just happened to get cut off the sun and just it's just how it happened. So somebody came across the lane 
and I, I couldn't swerve or stop in time, and neither could, uh, could they. So, it was a pretty significant uh, accident, <laughs> so to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Um, there were. I guess it's okay to just. It's awkward, maybe, to uh, to just like list injuries, yeah. but I mean, I have a cane now. I, I shouldn't have it forever, but I have it for a while. But for anybody wondering the extent of what you've, you've uh, gone through, yeah. So. I guess I'll just sort of um, list them. I, I broke either 15 or 16 um, individual bones were broken at least once. Uh, I had a lot of um, internal bleeding. That was actually the one of the riskiest parts of everything. So I, I've come to learn after the fact that a human male around my size has like seven or eight pints of blood in them like the pint, like a, me mm. a measurement. And um, I needed to have five pumped into me just because of what I lost on the way to the hospital. I nearly bled out, so it was a tiny miracle that like that didn't happen from the internal bleeding. They cut me open to find the bleeding. And it's just like, I call them tiny miracles. Try and think of like, a bunch of things to be happy about, to be grateful for. So I started making this list of what I became to call um, my, my little miracles or my tiny little miracles. So like a list of things that are um, unlikely to have happened as individual items. And the fact that I had so many of them and they were all like, like statistically, like so unlikely, like barely possible at all. And I have like this, amount of them that stack on top of one another. So I eventually fell asleep because I was so filled with like a warmth and a gratitude that I was fortunate enough to have even one of these little things, let alone 10 or whatever. And so anyway, one of them, the reason I got to that is when they opened me up to find the bleeding, you have a lot of stuff inside you, in, in around your belly and your abdomen and in your chest and it, in all these places. And they're all really, really important. They're there because they keep you alive, right? But um, I had one organ that was uh, irreparable. It was just shredded. It was like in, in pieces. And that's where all the blood was coming from. And um, it was the only one that was damaged anywhere in my abdomen. Uh, now, it was destroyed, but everything else was, was fine. And the only one that was hurt was the, the only one that you like you can take out and you don't really need. <laughs> so I think at least, I don't know for sure, but I think that that internal bleeding, that damage, and I, one of the bones I messed up was my uh, pelvis. So that whole thing got really terribly beat up. Um, it's put back together now and I, that's why I guess need this to walk. <laughs> um, so the, my spleen was destroyed but nothing else inside me, just spleen. Uh, I guess the, the significance of some of the bones I broke, like uh, I broke two in my neck, because like either one of them could move a little bit more that way or a little bit more that way and like messed up the actual spine and nothing from down there would ever work again. So like that was another one of those li like little miracles. I broke my neck in two places and Nothing happened. Wow. They literally, they could just wrap a thing around me and, and, and not let me move and they just grow back together and it's okay. So, and, and the pelvis, of course, I mentioned was another big break. It's what, what they call it is, um, um, sorry, an open book fracture, which means um, just imagine like a, a, a butterfly and then it just closes its wings. <laughs> and that's kind of what it was like. It just like flop and just in pieces Ooh. kind of everywhere. So that was a really big one. Um, and I was in the hospital for several weeks because the first eight or 10 days, they put me in a coma to make sure that my, I didn't mess my neck up. I didn't have paralysis. I didn't have brain damage. I don't know, you've been around, am I missing any? I, th I think you, you, you've <laughs> listed most of the things. I don't know how many pieces of a body are left. Like <laughs> I didn't break any teeth. Nothing happened to my face, which was really, really lucky. So when you got out of the hospital, you spent a good bit of time just here in your living room, like you said, with all this equipment. Uh, obviously, you weren't alone because you're not able to care for yourself at that point. You had a great support system through your parents. 
I did, yes, and not just my parents, also like a core group of friends, um, of which you, of course, are, were, still are, and I, I can't imagine after everything that's gone on over the last number of months, you will ever not be. <laughs> um, uh, but there's been there's been a huge amount of people that I'm grateful for, and if we were to talk to go even further, like to some of the support and fundraising, and like it's just. I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and like I, I've not had like, like I said, very many other than the the, the arm ripping thing. I, other than that, there's not been stuff that has made me um, sad or dark or scared or anything. Um, the support that I have had, um, especially from my parents, my friends, and the community, all of it. I've, I've spent my time on all of it. All of it has made me cry. But my parents in particular are, like I can't even, they effectively moved into my house uh, the, the night of the accident. And the only times that they have left have been because there was something needed here that wasn't here. So they would go to get it, to bring me to appointments. I've had a whole bunch of appointments back and forth and and when they couldn't bring me because I couldn't stand I had to be picked up in like this sling with like a miniature crane like a lift um, and put on another kind of thing so that the paramedics could put me in the ambulance to bring me to the hospital for an appointment then bring me back and they went to everything and even when I was in the hospital they would be lined up at the door waiting for um waiting to be allowed in for visiting hours so whatever time whatever day it was whatever um because like they're open at different hours on different days and there's like evening hours and date they were there waiting and um and were asked to leave because they were there later then like i can't even it's not i don't even have words to the amount of gratitude i'm not far from 40 my birthday's coming up relatively soon. I'll be 39. I have lived on my own since I graduated high school. And I've lived with my parents now for three or four months. And I, I love them in a way that I didn't, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't, like, you learn something about when you go through some kind of, like, emergency or a trauma or things go one of two ways. You know how you, they say, like, you find out who somebody really is when, like, the proverbial shit hits the fan or whatever. You find out who somebody really is. Or when, when stuff gets really tough, you find out who your real friends are or what they're really like. There's a whole new version of my mom and dad that's like... <laughs> Sorry. Um... They're, they're a quality of human being that, like, I didn't even... And I've always liked them. I've always thought they were great. But they're, like, that much more great. And, and it's not just them. I keep saying them, but, like, there's a... And I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. So, like, I told my parents that I was going to talk about this when we did this. So they're okay with it. But I didn't talk to... And you're one of them. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> um... But I didn't talk to everybody and get their permission to do it. But, like, you all know who you are, and I'm, and you know I'm talking about you, and you know that these tears are for your stupid face. (laughs) So, like, I don't need to get into all of it, but I I remember when I was first told that um, a GoFundMe campaign was started. There, There was, like, this weird... I don't know, it feels weird to me, I guess, because it was about me or for me, I should say, for me. Um, and my little girl is coincidentally right here. This is a, a, a Father's Day gift, and uh, I have it all of the time. Um, these all light up. <laughs> there was a GoFundMe um, uh, that was started, and that got virality in and around our city and, and, and to to other places also like uh, across Canada, like I was scrolling because when people donate, um, you can publicly say 
that you did or how much it is, you can leave a note or whatever for anybody who goes to the site to read. But if the campaign is yours, you can actually see individually everybody and um, man, I don't even have, have words like, uh, there, there, I'm told that there's a point when you go through some kind of a, a, a trauma that's going to affect your life financially for a significant amount of time. And like, I'm, I'm nowhere near going back to work. Like, I don't know when I will be. Like, this is probably gonna be a 15 to 30 minute conversation, this video, right? Um, I'm gonna need a break after this. And, I, and I've been walking for like a month now. And I've, got, I've gained weight back. Like, a, like I had lost 45 or 50 pounds of like just, and, and, my, and I'm getting some of that back. I'm strong now. And I still can't sit up straight for an hour sometimes, right? So I'm nowhere near going back to work. So I'm told that when you find yourself in that sort of a situation, you have this moment where it strikes you. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Like, how am I gonna get through this? Before I was, because after the coma, then, then I was in, um, on some pretty heavy um, pain medications and I was there long enough to recover from a bunch of surgeries to a point where they could take me out of like intensive care and put me under, I think they call it specialty care or special care or something like that where, where you, you have a nurse in the room with you for 24 hours a day. You're always there. There's somebody always there with you. So enough time to get me out of, out of ICU into special care, through special care and the ability to go into like a room, like a ward room where you, right? When all of that was done and I started to come to not just awake, cause you can be awake and you're not fully conscious when that happens. So after all of that was out of my system and I was able to be fully aware of the magnitude of this situation, that problem was already kind of solved. And so I never had that moment of, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because uh, instead, I had people who cared enough um, to prevent me from ever having that shock. Like, um, how am I going to keep the house my little girl lives in. How am I um, going to feed her? How am I um, not going to have my car taken from me? How am I, how is, how is my kid going to have Christmas? Like I never had to experience any of that because there was so much love that got just thrown at my family. Um, and in the sweetest, most beautiful ways, both through, through like um, the GoFundMe, which reached uh, a dollar amount that, frankly, I'm still uncomfortable with. Like there's a there's there, there's a sense of like like in the entrepreneurial community, there's a, there's a a term called um, this is one of those instances where I'm not remembering the word uh, uh, imposter syndrome where you feel like you are not good enough to do the thing that you're doing and you're making it work. It's the, the same sort of thing. I feel the same sort of way about the level of support that um, I, I received. I say we a lot, actually. I'm, just, I'm trying to say I more. I say we received because it's like my family, my circle, my, my loved ones. And I have so much, I have more, I have so much gratitude for it that I feel like, <laughs> um, I struggle with, uh, accepting having, I struggle with accepting deserving the, the degree to which the community re responded. And that's really, really tough because feeling like you deserve something yet simultaneously being acutely and certainly like definitively aware that you do in fact very much need it but 
not always recognizing or feeling worthy of it is a very strange um, dichotomy to sort through in, in your head. So um, I don't have to lose my house um, and I don't have to force myself back to work way too fast. The general consensus was um, to a certain time frame, right? Like you'll be in the hospital probably for another month or maybe two and then you might be an inpatient or maybe just an outpatient for therapy at the Miller Center for anywhere of the number of weeks to six months and it could be a really, really long time because everybody recovers differently, right? But with the amount of support that I had and, and the fact that I knew that I would have the ability to come at this with a mindset that the overwhelming amount of love I had been sent was firing. I was listening to what they were saying. I wasn't being impolite at all. and I didn't want to be like that guy. But um, at the same time in my head, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing, no, I'm not, I'm not here until then. I'm not. You're not moving me from one hospital into another so that I could like practice moving my arm and learn to walk again. I'm like, I'm no way. So at that moment, I like had a switch in my head go off. I'm like, that, that's not, it's not that it's not good enough for me. It's not good enough for everybody else who's already done so much and literally put their lives on hold for an amount of time that in my head is already too long for everybody else to have everything else put aside. I don't think I've ever said this to all of the people who are around me through all of this. I don't, I haven't said this. This is, it's already way too long for everybody else to shut everything down so that I would be okay. There's no way, there's no way I'm allowing for a situation, if I have any way around it, where that is any longer than absolutely necessary. And I decided that I could, that I could do it and it could change. So how do I feel about that overwhelming outpouring of support? I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> This is obviously a very, very uh, overwhelming thing for you. A little bit. And uh, Jason, it's, it's inspiring to see somebody who could easily take all this and turn it into a, a negative thing, and lots of people would. So the fact that you're able to sit there and be optimistic and laugh and have a, a good outlook on this, it should be an inspiration for anybody watching. So thanks for taking this hard time <laughs> over the last, uh, last little while here to sit down and talk to us. You're welcome. It's sincerely my pleasure, but also at the exact same time, um, thank you um, uh, for for helping to like to assemble it and to and to do it because and <clears throat> thank you for being um, one of those people on mom's Facebook messenger group who's in the gang and for um, delivering food that your wife made and thank you for being at the hospital in the waiting room when you couldn't see me and thank you for putting together Jason's uh, prescription playlist on Spotify for when I woke up and I couldn't sleep and I could have music that was assembled by my friends because they all have a story and thank you for organizing things behind the scenes for my real estate career and giving information and coordinating and talking to people that there's literally nobody in the world who could ever know you did it. You deserve it, and we love you, Jason. <laughs> so that's probably a good place to end right here. Uh, <laughs> any final words to everybody who, uh, who's watching right now? I would just like to say thank you to, um, I don't have, I'm not going to say a list of names, I'm not going to mention a bunch of people, I'm not going to mention categories of people, I'm literally going to say thanks 
uh, with an amount of gratitude that is all-encompassing and an amount of thanks that if you are the most thankful and grateful person in the world, you still don't necessarily understand the degree <laughs> to which I am thankful for a list of people that I, and an entire society that I, I don't know. Thank you. And uh, tune in next week. <laughs> now I'm going to go lie down. <laughs> it all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. Janes and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosworthy.ca. I felt it was my fault. That I deserved it. For years, my abuser said I was alone. It's nice not to be. Never forget when I first met Jason. It was over 10 years ago. In my marketing career and in his real estate career, we came together and have been having laughs ever since. I hope you all have enjoyed hearing from Jason this evening for the first time in a long time. Thank you, Joe Dominics. Thank you, Rogers and Out of the Fog for bringing Jason's incredible story into our living rooms tonight and forevermore. Please take care of each other. Be careful out there. And we'll see you next time. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us 